Today I'm here in the town of Terranceville, population of about 500 people uh, just off the Bjorn Peninsula and we're going to take a look at uh, what's happening down on the beach and take a look around the place uh, just to get a feel for it. How are we doing for numbers? Uh, I've got 962, she's got 600 I think. So oh, okay. We're only this far. <laughs> okay. And there's still lots there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, this is only the big stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is important because it has a tracking number and a Danafil number. They can kind of trace it back to where it's coming from in a general sense. They, they, I don't think they can get an exact, but they're trying to. So it's very important to find uh, identifiable, identifiable markings. Oh, okay, so the, uh, we're uh, on the Terranceville Metal Beach uh, doing beach cleanup. Some uh, employees from MUN who work in this area of the environment. And uh, so they've gratefully come out to, to help us get going. There is another project or several projects like this going on in Placentia Bay. They weren't aware of our problem. I emailed the, um, uh, the contact I had at MUN and... Then I got the ball rolling, so they were they volunteered to come out, and so generally what they're trying to do it's more of a research study, so that they got actually identifiable parts uh, of garbage pieces, so that they can actually use that to uh, organize and group all the pieces of garbage in uh, in a manner so that you can actually identify that. 75 70 percent of it is commercial for instance and 30 percent is residential or after 70 percent is commercial how much of it comes from lobster pots how much comes from crab how much comes from uh just general fishing um and uh, other forms of garbage so so the beach is about what a kilometer or more long and it's pretty much covered and we've only done an area of probably a couple hundred feet and we already have 1500 pieces of garbage. They're, they're mainly tabulating all the data that we collect, the data being the pieces of garbage and organizing it and logging it into a, uh, an app they have called a marine debris tracker. So apparently this is being used all over the world and uh, people of all different sorts and types are kind of pulling together and and doing beach cleanups they're they're hoping if they can track the currents and all that sort of stuff but there's this is what they're working on and once you got numbers then you can take it to the specific groups that are responsible for the, the types of garbage that we find and say and put some pressure on them to uh, to either help us or be responsible for it or you know help with cleanups provide funding from government maybe to uh, to fund an ongoing long-term solution to this problem. So this is only short-term solution cleaning up, but what we need to do is find out where it's coming from and probably ultimately reduce the use of plastic in the world generally. Right? We had a storm a couple weeks ago and this beach would actually look like plastic and a lot of the garbage now is actually covered underneath our feet here. Yeah, so if you pick up like this piece of garbage right here, you're, you're digging into it now, right? Because it's all covered up. So that was all in pieces. Worse again. So. Do you find this beach any worse than any other ones you've done? Uh, we're finding the same stuff, and it's more of it. More of it? But the closest, I think, that we've seen to this is probably Arnold's Cove and St. Bride's. They were pretty close on the first day we were there. St. Croix starting to compare. St. Croix actually is St. Croix. But that's, uh, nobody lives there, so you don't get many complaints about it, but it is really bad. Well, that was an interesting visit into Terranceville. Great to see concerned citizens like Jim Hickey uh, engage people like Memorial University.